So let's move forward to write our exception classes and exception handling. So we do not want our application to, you know, just through exception and we don't really know what is going on. So we want to have our custom exception handling so we can return a setting status code to the user. So the user can get to know exactly what he or she is doing wrong. So in my exception folder or package here, I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to create a first exception class. This let's just create a not found. Let's call it not found exception. So this is a class and this is going to extend a runtime exception. And I'm just going to create a public non found exception here, and it's going to take in a message. And here I'm just going to invoke the super message, the super constructor of the runtime exception. I'm going to pass in a message which is the error or exception, right? I'm just going to copy this, paste it. I'm going to call the next name. Let's just call this name value exception. Let's say name value required exception. Let's say a user need to pass in a certain value, right? So let me see name value required exception. So the same thing is going to be here and everything's fine. So let's also do the same thing and call that invalid credential exception. Let's paste the same and say invalid credential credentials exception. And the same thing goes there. So let's now let's create our global exception handler where we are going to be using all of these exceptions that we created, right? So what's going on here? I mean. Okay, yeah. So let me just come here, create my global, I just call it global exception handler, right? Okay, so here it is going to be at controller. controller advice right from the spring web framework web dot bind stuff like that so put that here and here i'm just going to sit at exception handler is going to be exception dot class right so here i'm just going to say public i don't know it's going to be response Entity or is that response entity of response, right? Remember our response is going to be or will be trained. So make sure the response is from your model, right? The response, right? Check it. Make sure it's from your model, your DTO, right? Then here I'm just going to call this handle on exceptions or handle all unknown exceptions right so this is going to take an exception let's call it the x and here i'm just going to say response let's say response equals to response dot view that dot build i'm going to have a status which will http status dot internal server error dot value right so any exception that we are not able to catch let's just make that an internal server error in the status code right that's going to be a 500 kind of error so here i'm just going to say start message i'm just going to extract the message and i'm just going to build and here i'm just going to return new response entity 
I'm just going to pass it the response. I'm just going to pass it the HTTP ethos dot eternal server error, right? So this is it. So whenever we are having any error exception in our application that we are not able to cut, it's going to also catch it and it's going to pass it and it's going to return the response over here, right? So let's also do this for some other assumptions we're able to catch. So let's just do this for a not found exception, which is this right here, right? So we can see we're making sure we're importing the non found exception. Where is it from? Is the same folder, so it's not going to, you know, when a, a class or a package is in the same folder or it's in the same package, it's not going to be imported, it's going to be auto detected, right? So, the let me just call this handle not found exception, right? So, this exception is not found here, it's going to be a non found exception. So, here I'm just going to call this not found, it's going to be 404 and here it's going to be a 404. So, if there's a reason, so if I'm catching a 404 exception, it's going to be cached over here. And it's going to be thrown, it's going to be shown displayed as a 404 status code, right? So let's also catch the other exceptions. This is going to be, let's put this handle. Name. What did I call the handle name required exception? Let me just copy, copy this. And see, handle name required exception is going to be name required exception. This name required exception. And for here, this is going to be a bad request, right? So, if let's say validation is, we are having a validation error, then I just going to call this a bad request, right? So, this is going to be a bad request. So, here, let's also and do invalid credential exception, which is the last one here. This is going to be and do you know let me just come here and get the name. And do invalid credential exception. And this is going to be a bad request at web. Uh, if your credential is not correct, it's going to be as a bad request, right? So, yep, so this is okay. So, with this, we can, you know, be safe to get the appropriate response from our endpoints. So, now let's have exception to, you know, to get our security error. For example, let's say if an unauthorized user is come to our endpoint and just try to access, you know, something uh, instead of our application to like, you know, throw an exception on runtime or just, you know, just say 404, 401 or 403 without, you know, returning an appropriate, you know, object in the response. We might not know what exactly is going on, right? So I've had a lot of people, you know, reach out to me, oh, my application is you know, the response is 401, but it's not saying anything. I don't know what's going on. So now let's have an implementation to be able to handle those security or validation exceptions, right? So I'm going to come over here, my exception, and the first one is going to be a custom authentication entry point exception. Let's say someone is just trying to enter through our service. Uh, who is not authenticated and is let's return an appropriate response, right? And capture that. So, just going to come over here, create a class, and call that custom authentication. You can just call it anything you want. I just want it to be descriptive entry point, right? So, here we know that this is a, an authentication kind of entry point error that has to do with security, right? So, 
as a cloud. So let's make it a component. Uh, let's just have our all as constructor here. And here is going to implement the authentication entry point, right? And here I'm just going to I'm just going to override implement the method, which is let me just show you guys can see this. So let me just make this big, right? So we can see here. Let me just move this to the next line. So we can see, you know what, let me just bring this back, move this to the next line so we can see what's going on here, right? Okay. Yep. So these are the parameters that's going to be injected in the request, it's going to be injected in the response, it's going to be injected in and um, the auth exception, and we're going to capture it and then return an appropriate response, right? So as usual, as usual, let's build a error. So what's this? I just call this error response. Post to response of view that of build. And here I'm just going to say the status is going to be HTTP. There is that HTTP status dot unauthorized on authorized the value that's going to be four three or could be four one or four three. Let me check. On Authorized error is not your right, error code, right? I think it's 401. Yeah, it's 401, right? So, yeah, it's 401. Okay, so this is going to return a 401 error code. The status of our response is going to be 401. And uh, we can just decide to have a message, you know, for the user to get to see. It's going to be an auth exception dot get message. And we are building it. And below, I'm just going to say response dot set. Is that response or set content type? I'm just going to put this application slash JSON. I'm going to say response dot set status. It's going to be HTTP unauthorized value. What's going on here? Is this not? This is should be coming. Send this set content type, right? Content type. I'm doing set content length, right? It's application slash JSON. Then I'm just going to say response dot get writer. And this is going to be dot write. And before that, I'm going to be using my object mapper to write it. So I'm just going to come over here and say private final. Just going to say object mapper. You know, the object mapper. Right, so I'm just going to say object mapper dot right a string error response right. So we're going to be returning these right, and we can see we are building our error response and we are returning it. I'm just say require as constructor right, so we can inject this object mapper here right. Okay, so that is that. Let me just view to make sure that I'm not getting like some kind of error somewhere. Our constructor. Okay, custom entry points. Okay. Let me see. Object number is already defined in this. Okay, okay. So let me just get rid of this. Do that again. Right, so I think everything is fine. So, yep, so let's also do the same thing for the custom access denier handler. So, if probably there's an access denier, I think that should be, I think, let's just write that, right? Let's see. So, this should be 
it should be required i think it should be required our constructor so we can inject this right so let's check that again okay was able to build correctly let me just check where it's being built um build i should be here build right okay everything is fine right so yep so let's create our custom access denial exception let me just come here and say custom access the denial handler right let me just come that and this is going to be a component as i'm going to be injecting into other phases and i'm just going to have my quite high constructor i'm going to bring in my object mapper and here i'm just going to let me implement my access denial handler i'm going to override implement the methods which is a handle and here i'm just going to move this to next so we can see the method the parameters and here i'm going to as usual let me just build my response already here let's copy that to build it and this is going to be an access denial exception to get message same thing as what we did before so for here i'm just going to also get my response and do the same thing here right so this is going to be set content type applications like this in set status right which this is going to be forbidding, right? So let's change that to forbidding, right? And then we are writing it using an object mapper to write our error response. And I think it's going to be for also if there's a, let's say, user is trying to access an endpoint without passing in a token, it's going to throw a forbidding error, which is a 403, right? Uh, to write code 403. Say forbidding. So let me see. Forbidding is for O three. Yeah, for three. I think I was right. So yep. So that's going to be that's going to help us to handle our unknown error like for O one, for O three. That spring secret is usually thrown that we don't catch, right? So this is going to catch it. Whoever we are using it, we're going to use it to catch. It. So this is our exception. Let me just move again to make sure that everything looks good right so we have invalid credential exception which is a bad request we have our name value exception which is a bad request too right so we are having a non-found exception which is a 404 and we are having a generic exception that we don't know and that's going to be internal server error and Check this for BD403. And for this, this is going to be 401 unauthorized. So our, our exception looks good. 